So cool, isn't it's he? It's just so cool. Um, I mean, there's so many great players to highlight for FaZe, but I mean, Astro went super Astro during mm -hmm. Group B, but he's actually been, I don't want to say it, inconsistent. He needs to be firing on all cylinders today, right? I think he's back. Okay. And the reason why I think he's back is he did step up big time against Oxygen. I think everyone on FaZe stepped up big time against Oxygen. Everyone had a positive rating, so that was, it looks to be FaZe, they're now starting to hit their trend, they're starting to hit a bit of form, Ollie, and you couldn't ask for a better form right now going into this matchup. It's time, isn't it? This is the time to be hitting your best form indeed. We are going to be jumping into the map bands there as they surprise us on the screen. We've got a clubhouse coming in for FaZe. FaZe are known as a bit of a clubhouse team demo. Oregon for Lick Liquid, again, another good map for Liquid, and mm -hmm. if we need it... Both teams have their maps. We will be going for a Villa. I, I think that both teams have done well out of the map ban here. The there isn't a clear winner in my eyes. This is three maps. They do share a somewhat no similar way. map pool as well. It has to go to Villa. There is no doubt in my mind, I think. FaZe will come in clubhouse because they're known as that kind of clubhouse team. I don't think Liquid inside the regular season are kind of known for that. It's mostly NIP and FaZe. Oregon certainly can go in favor. Whenever I think we see Nesk uh, the other day playing in Oregon, he, he just he moves around that bomb site and basement so well, just the flow that he has. Uh, and I think Villa definitely has to be in the cards. All right, well, Demo, Ollie, thank you so much for your excellent analysis as always, but our teams are ready to go. Like I said off the top, Liquid versus FaZe, Brazil versus Brazil, Ollie versus Demo. <laughs> Blue and Stokes, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Jackie. And it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for our third matchups of the day to get things started here. And now we've seen North America versus Latam to top things off for the both of us. But now it's time once again to head into an interregional matchup. It's Latam versus Latam, and it's a rematch from the groups as well as we have Team Liquid up against FaZe. Stokes, let's talk about your thoughts on this matchup as we get ready to jump into our first map on Clubhouse. I'm very excited about this map pool, especially because we got away from some of the weird maps that we played between the these two inside of group stage, especially Bank standing out to me as kind of an odd one in between these two, at least for that playthrough of it. So excited to see what they have to offer here on Clubhouse in Oregon. But I'll be honest with you, I can't pick a side here. I think that only or the only influence you could possibly have going into this is what Liquid have going for them right now in the likes of Nesk and Paulu, two of them being the top five players at this land currently, which is absolutely absurd to think that Liquid has two of them. And instead of just one. You'd, you'd figured maybe one player, like Sonics with Grixer, but no, they have collected so many talented people for this roster, but FaZe is no slouch, and that's why we must play through this best of three to figure out who will take it. It starts here on Clubhouse as we get things launched. The fans at home are gonna be favoring the Liquid side of things, should be no surprise there. Now it's time to see if that truly holds itself to be true, or if FaZe will carry forward with their strength from the Oxygen matchup earlier and be able to top out against Liquid to getting revenge for the 0-2 loss they took against them earlier on in the group stage. The band's already coming in here, and we are going to see uh, Maverick first knocked out, followed by second hard breacher as well, Habana being eliminated here, trying to muck up the difficulty when it comes to opening some of these pivotal hard breach positions, such as the primary balconies on the outside, as well as the hatchwork to get into the basement too. Absolutely the case, and obviously that means that Thatcher will be in the play pool as well, so we'll see if these teams want to try and utilize that operator. Kaid going to follow through as well, even though Thatcher is in play, so just making sure that they don't have access to some of those strange areas in order to uh, apply those electro claws and possibly get some things off. We see some electro claw tricking happen every once in a while, so just want to make sure that they don't have access to that. Liquid will be starting us off on the defense with FaZe on the offense. It's a gym bedroom defense to start us off here, and looking to be quite the unique one at that. Nesk will have the vigil, but this could just be a six pick coming through here to throw them off and make them think that initially CCTV or rather Armory would be the site instead. Away from that, we're also going to have a Mira pick being flung in here, and indeed you're correct about that six pick, by the way. We're going to see a quick switch over to the Wamai, just to add that little bit of utility mitigation that was not present on the team up until this point. Attackers similarly are also going to six pick away from an IQ that they originally had towards a Jackal here to try and spot any of the more out and about players from Liquid that may be present over the course of this round. Honestly, it might not be too much of a concern here, so we'll see how useful Cameraman's utility ends up being over the course of the round. But either way, Liquid will be locking themselves into the upstairs bedroom 
And with the assistance of a mirror, it's certainly going to make their own aggressive capabilities to swing out from those mirror windows a little bit better, especially if they're going to extend it into areas over here like Cash in the CCTV part of the map. Should be a little interesting, especially with this mirror window coming in from PSK. We'll see how he wants to apply these. Just depends on really where he wants to. Usually you'll have one inside of the bathroom, could have one here inside of red as well. But obviously we need to find a spot for that second one. Stash is a perfect spot as well. There's really only three spots that we usually see yep. these on this location. So this is definitely going to be right as rain. So they're going to be trying to waste the time of FaZe as they work their way into the first round. Here we've got them spawned down. We do have the Thatcher making an appearance, which is going to be almost a requirement now due to the bands that ended up coming through there. Most notably, the Maverick getting knocked out there requires Thatcher to be able to get decent openings onto some of these harder to access walls, as otherwise you would need to be able to get frag grenades into good positions. And you guys can probably see it on the right side of your screen. Not a whole lot of those. In fact, none whatsoever currently being picked up from FaZe as they're going to fall back on a different form of utility. Four smokes brought into play for this team here. Already three drones burnt out as well just within the first 30 seconds of the round, so we'll have to be a little bit cautious about the rest of the round if they're going to drain at the same rate here. Either way, though, Ask will get found out from the drone that just worked itself into the garage. Now we'll have to try and isolate his position out. Only step number one here, but the good news is it doesn't have a whole lot of support in terms of utility. Either way, though, damage being returned on the bullet. Cyber now pressuring in against him as well. This is a tough territory for the player from Liquid to work themselves out of now with the jump up. No, Ask is going to be able to win the fight anyway. Number two, is it in the cards? That's the next question for him here. Uh, he's at low HP now after that first fight, but still crouching away. And with Nesk picking up another kill as well, things continue to look promising for Liquid, even with that trade finally being confirmed by Bullet. A jump start here for Liquid in the afternoon as they desperately need it. FaZe already having their warm up earlier as Astro ascends the stairwell. Two inside of the space, one will eat the AK-12 alive, and Astro with two, a little bit of a hip fire, catches resets off guard, hits him right in the noggin. Down to a 2v3 here for Liquid. Nesk will continue to hold on to Cash. Wants to try and make a stand here, just saw the hip of the Zofia, but not able to land any shots as one likely would have sprayed white there anyways. PSK is starting to take some heat from the balcony here as well as FaZe begin to collapse around this site. Nesk unfortunately can't play out from his position inside of Lodgy here. Too low HP would be a massive risk, so both have to play together in the depths of this site, and unfortunately both have been pinched out already. FaZe have great intel as to where both of these players are positioned, so over the next few seconds we should see FaZe begin to get into position to go for their executed souls, leaning in towards the gym window. Is certainly thinking about it at this point, but Nesk also Give it a moment, give it a lull in the action. Is allowed to sneak back out through Lodgy. He's going to get in position to start countering out that himself here. Just in the event that once again, things go awry. Souls has held himself back. He'll consider his uh -oh. position outside and know this is going to get bad quickly here with Astro coming in for the pinch. But no, PSK, he spots it and fends it off. But Nesk is dropped. He's too low HP to sustain an extended fight. So he goes down. And now Souls has the all clear to go for the plant inside of Jim. PSK trades out his only other teammate. Souls is off the plant. He's on the clock oh! as well, and it's PSK with the big clutch from Liquid to start out the series. What a fantastic round from Liquid there, but PSK ice in the man's veins for round one. A fantastic clutch from him, and one that looked like FaZe could have more than likely gotten that plant down. It was starting to take away, but cancels it in order to try and take a gunfight instead after Bullet loses his life over here by construction. Has to take the 1v1, and unfortunately enough for him, PSK just stronger in that situation, especially with the Vector in close range. A great time-wasting capability coming out from Ask at the beginning of the round as well. Bleeds a good 30 to 40 seconds off of the clock on top of guaranteeing a one-for-one -one trade from a very risky position on normally a gym hold here. We usually don't see players adventuring out that far into the garage catwalk. The furthest they would, in most circumstances, end up going is going to be to the inside of that CCTV and cash area. Area. So taking a big play there, and it ends up working out well. The delay some time and sets up the big man on campus here to clutch it out at the end of the round. Massive props to PSK, but we are going to see that operator hand it over to another player's resets. We'll pick up the mirror now as Team Liquid heads into the basement. Solid setup here, as I believe Liquid will more than likely continue to abuse Mira just because she is available. She's so very strong and perfect for situations like that. Did you see how much information PSK got there, John? So much intel picked up by that Black Mirror, and this is exactly how this site's going to go as well. He'll be able to influence the engagements around the bottom of main stairs, as well as wherever they allocate the other Black Mirror to. Liquid are also going to go for a roam strategy here, so this should help the site players that are stuck downstairs all along 
alone. But as we know with FaZe, they really like to go direct with this situation. This is what we saw them do earlier against OXG on this exact same map. So let's see if we have the same results. Yep, gonna see a lot of droning inside of the first 30 or 40 seconds here. As FaZe try to build up a better intel bank about where exactly these liquid extensions are gonna be positioned towards. Nesk being the first to be found out, but FaZe might actually plead a bit of ignorance to that. Either that or just seeing early setup from Astro here as he puts that breaching charge down. This could, of course, just be a bit of a red herring as well. Trying to catch the members of Liquid off guard and hopefully get someone committed in a dirt tunnel where there won't be any correspondence from FaZe, and that would allow the members from Liquid to arrive that the members of FaZe lock that player in. But it's going to be Nesk to strike first yet again for Liquid here, as we're going to be able to see him pick up the opening versus Bullet, knocking him down. Astro right on point to immediately exchange that back out, however, as he trades on to Ask and brings us on to even terms. Already the fireworks popping off between these two feisty Latam teams. Home game initially working out swell for Liquid. Still have some odds and ends to tie up if your phase, especially a big one here if you consider Nesk. As he's currently inside of Garage. Cameraman will rotate in through weights to continue to try and clear things out as Nesk gets caught off guard from the single panel here. It's very serious intel coming in onto him. He'll more than likely keep these yellow pings. Saw one down low and able to win it out as Astro just not paying attention to where the Rafters player is. Now with everyone around him, Nesk more than likely to die soon and Cameraman will pick him up, but wasting plenty of time. And not only that, he's gotten rid of the Zofia as well as the Ace. Plenty of time wasted, yeah, but still plenty to go as well here with just under half the round remaining. So FaZe are not starving for that at any point just as of yet. And Liquid now going to be forced to try and bleed out as much of this as possible. Keep in mind, of course, still have the mirror windows downstairs to play with. And FaZe currently looking like they might have been pushed into a blue place. So we'll see them potentially run directly into that mirror window. But that won't be the only issue, of course. We are going to see players, you can see, Two of them now getting in position to start leveraging themselves downstairs over towards Moto. And oh, oh no, Souls shooting through. Palu had the setup to counter this play, but instead he's the one that'll be countered because of the patch being left soft there. The members of FaZe read directly into it, and suddenly they have the advantage going into the last minute of the round. Cameraman starting to pressure into dirt as well, but there was a Banshee here moments ago. Is it still there? I don't see, actually, yes, it is indeed in the corner, so they will have some info on that department as we get down to the last 20 seconds. Cameraman and FaZe will be forced into sight. So the deployable shield here for Blue to play around as Cameraman will adopt some info through the wall. PSK lying inside of his own smoke, but his friend's now dead. It's all left up to him with zero smokes in his pocket, dancing around Blue. He knows someone's inside of this space, and he'll grab the kill, but now before Cyber can move in through Armory and nab him, it's gonna be one-on-one -on -one between these two squads. Trade setups are available this time, so no second clutch to come in immediately on on the second round from PSK. Although his first kill is certainly smooth indeed. The rest of the team falling apart, especially again inside of their extended position upstairs. Costs them dearly, especially once more also that position below the Moto hatch, where we saw a very unfortunate play play out against the members of Liquid. They had a Nitro set up right here. It goes Palu had a Nitro cell sitting right below that hatch, ready to stop the walk up, but instead it's him that gets found out very quickly here. And just like that, Liquid's defense is torn to shreds and FaZe instead pick up a second round, or first round, I should say, for themselves in a second overall in this matchup. Yes, indeed. It's be one-to-one -one at the current score line, but this is a very fast-acting clubhouse as well. I believe that this is more than likely going to be a banger of a series. Oh, yeah. No mistakes made back inside of this one. Yes, indeed. We are on the teeter-totter, my friend, and I welcome it. Let's go the full distance here in between these two, because would you have it any other way? I don't think so. Well, it's going to be CCTV here for Team Team Liquid will have some interesting setups here, especially for reset's sake, as we'll have a Banshee down low inside of Secret. Now, the good news about Banshees outside of their slowing effect is that they also make that wub wub sound that we're all used to. That's some very solid intel for these site players, especially for the player at the top of red or cash stairs. That way they know somebody's down low inside of Secret. As for Liquid, we'll specifically ask, he'll be inside a garage. This area very, very difficult to play as more than likely you will die as we've seen inside of these last couple of rounds it's just how long is it going to take does still have two discs to apply to that location as well as a breaching charge over on dirt for some late access if need be for face 
Bit of a slower broil here for FaZe, considering it's another second floor attack, so a lot more early positions need to be maintained before they can start getting aggressive and start to suss out some of these extended positions from Liquid. The ones to pay attention to is going to be resets roaming around the bar area of the first floor and ask once again on that extension out towards the garage catwalk. It'll become a huge thorn in the side of FaZe if they want to use that position to attack this site. Might not necessarily be in the cards, though. FaZe seem to be favoring construction side play right now. And that has set Nesk over towards the blue position to maybe get aggressive as he'll still want to try and potentially open up the main balcony in order to give them an extra angle to peer into this site. Time will tell, though, how exactly the members of FaZe will build up into this execute as we can see Souls in position now to XO out the setup over here on the main balcony. There we go. It'll be dealt with without too much of an issue. Not really anything seriously in the way of their assault there. Well, Astro once again on the sneaky move. We saw him pulling things very similar earlier on this back end. Unluckily enough, the Thatcher EMP will not land close enough towards the battery to actually disable it. So Cameraman will have to reposition himself, fortunately still having one more EMP in order to disable that wall and allow the Selma charge to go off. So Astro actually has an angle into this space. This is going to make Green Box especially difficult to play inside of that area. So we'll see exactly what can possibly go on. Cyber going to clear that as well just to make sure that if anybody was playing inside of that area whilst the Selma was going down, they were dead to rights. FaZe already making some solid headway over here on the construction side. Uh, they going down in a position where we commonly see players try to position themselves and anchor to stop the swing in through that construction wall, but as you guys noted, nothing there this time. So FaZe chucking those nades out with not a whole lot of intel to play behind them. I don't think anybody from Fit Liquid was even in the neighborhood as that, nades w that nade excuse me, ended up going out. Either way though, Liquid have wasted out time due to the relative inaction we have seen from FaZe here. 30 seconds left. We've only just now seen a kill, but it is going to be immediately exchanged in another part of the map here as Souls trades out onto PSK, bringing us down to a 4v4. Cameraman has a great follow-up as he leaps into the cash site as well, taking out the first hold inside of Red Stairs, but Ness is still holding his position. Astro again, though, keeping numbers even and keeping Team Liquid earnest as we go down to the 2v2. And now Bullet strikes also to eliminate resets. The Nitro is in, but no kills to be found, but Nesk with the clutch maybe in his future. As he moves himself out, finds the trade on the bullet, is attempting to deny the plant, but doesn't have great intel here. Astro's alone oh. off the gun, but Nesk even with the pre-fire against him, gets his triple instead. Liquid are gonna go up 2-1 now, as they get a response on their cash hold. Cool, calm, and collected. Just another day in the office for Nesk. Even fist bumping before he gets the diffuser. Fantastic stuff there from Liquid, but even better showcase of Nesk's ability with that triple kill. Liquid now pull ahead yet again here on the CCTV site, and it was getting sketchy in between these two. Time and time again, they're able to equalize the man advantage and make it to where they have to play out these low man situations, and John, it can go either way inside of that. All it takes is one person to have a hot gun, and now two people are dead, and that's the round. So Liquid now in charge of things, but for how long is going to be the question as we do a return over towards Jim. And this is a site where they were able to negotiate control for themselves, but only due to clutch capability that ended up coming out from PSK on the mirror while also being fed a dump truck load of intel in his 1v2. Liquid, of course, cannot rely on that type of performance, as we saw in the very next round where PSK was put up against a similar situation, a 1v3. Obviously, I'm a different operator in a different site, but still could not leverage the same type of advantage there to shut that one down. So it's got to be a bit stronger, especially from the time-wasting department here for Team Liquid to be able to pick up a third round. The big change up to Liquid strategy for Jim this time around is there's not going to be a Mira inside of this lineup. We saw that used to the nth degree the last time that we were here, especially when it came to how things broke down inside of the site when we saw PSK playing inside of Stash. You got so much intel with that Black Mirror. This time they're not going to have access to that. So they'll be flying blind for a certain sense, but the good news past that is that they have some other cool toys to be able to utilize here, like the Banshees as well as Reset's Laser Gates. So they'll have some semblance of knowledge just based off of those two as to what FaZe want to do with the map. Now FaZe out and about, they'll be bringing Flores along for the ride as well, so we'll see how far they can get with these Rotero drones. Astro up on top and in some degree in position here to line up against another player from the team. 
Not going to be able to necessarily find that, though. Looks like we have plenty of hard breach in, or rather, reinforcements sitting in the way. So, not going to be able to possibly pierce the veil on that this early on in the round. And I would imagine, again, we're going to have relative inaction from FaZe built up for the first two minutes just because they've got those Rotera drones to throw out. That'll be Cyber's main priority for this first minute or two. Take out as much utility as possible inside of the site. We'll have to probably wait and stagger them a little bit, too, as you guys can see here. Those magnets coming out. More and more of them will spawn the deeper we get into this round. And the longer he waits, the more of them will be on the field and the more that can be possibly taken out by the Rotera drones. What a sketchy spot to drone. But the good news is, is that entire wall is reinforced. This is one of those things as a siege player, you kind of start sweating when somebody's right next to sight and droning like that. But luckily enough for FaZe, and especially for Astro, he doesn't have to worry about it all too much, just given the circumstances of where Liquid could be at the current moment. And he knows that. That's exactly why he's doing what he's doing. For Liquid, they'll be stuck inside a bathroom as well as Stash for the time being. An EMP out to assist with getting some hold or grasp on this bathroom wall here and start applying pressure to Liquid's actual defensive setup. Ask still outside inside of Cash as the rest of the team just simply awaits FaZe's arrival. Bold Assault traveling up the uh, staircase here inside of Garage, but still no engagement just yet from anyone. They've gotten Jacuzzi open, but Ask will be first to strike as he takes down Cameraman. PSK will add under the fire as well as he'll take out Astro. But Bullet, quick to the trigger, even though Souls is now down, they need some serious help over on this side, and that's why Cyber has picked it up and dropped in off plat. Resilience from FaZe is something to be respected, their capability to trade out with these kills. We saw that to some degree inside of their OXG matchup earlier today as well. Let's get FaZe having to play two best of threes today in order to push themselves further and further into the upper bracket. This round, though, looking a little bit drastic now that that third player had been bled out from the Toxic Babes. Now things go down to a 4v2. Rune Intel is still possible for FaZe to bring back out here as one available still here for Bullet to be able to utilize. But away from that, Liquid have full control of every aspect of their site here. And for the two members on FaZe, they don't have the greatest capability to get themselves in. A great shot from Bullet, though, to finish off PSK. Oh! Cyber with two of his own. Suddenly, the round's been flipped and it's up to resets and a 1vx to clutch this out. Plant's not going to get interrupted and Cyber might just shut this down. No, resets. He's in the fight still. Be spotted out by a drone. A little trouble taking care of that, but that's all right. As he works himself forward here, he's got to figure out where Bullet went as he's long gone outside of the windows and now outside the long balcony. Looking to clutch this one out. Just play on the sound cube when resets taps on the counter defuse here. No immediate rehop here for Bullet, so he can actually sit on it for quite some time. Here comes oh! the tape, but it's immediately read by resets and another incredible clutch going to come out from Liquid on their holding gym. That game sense is incredible from resets. What is that timing as he sticks it down to the last microsecond before ball, uh, before bullet rather, bails in the window, thinking a little bit too fast as these two are just insane at the moment. Oh my goodness. A 3-1 lead now for Liquid after resets pick up, but resets picks up a round that he should have never have had. Faze have got to shore up these post plants. That's the second retake in a row that's come back against the phase attack here. So while they don't seem to have too much of an issue getting into the site, especially when you've got players like Astro and Bullet on the entry game, they're having problems though maintaining and more importantly stopping these clutches that we've seen two times in a row on this specific site. So it's back to the basement where things did go well for phase. Unfortunately, the only site where things have gone off for phase here as they're able to control this what ultimately still had three players standing after all members of Liquid were dead. Incredible story thus far for Liquid's defensive side, but what's it going to mean to how their offenses go? Faye has been having a lot of trouble. Even though they've been getting the picks and getting the plants, these post plants have not been working out for them. That round, a clutch moment for them, but quickly turned into Reset's highlight reel there at the tail end. Now inside of round five, Liquid having quite a few options inside of what they're bringing to the table. Ask will adopt the Mira back into the lineup. Paul will be bringing the bandits to make sure that those don't open up and pass that everything's seeming pretty rudimentary at the end of the day. As for FaZe, you can say more of the same for them. Cameraman will keep the Thatcher in as well as the Flores for Cyber to make sure that they can get rid of some of these odd locations from Liquid. Got the members of 
Faze getting themselves onto the field now. And for Liquid, it's going to be a little bit of a spread out play on the opening few seconds of the round. No one really trying to take any huge risks, risks here. Excuse me, I say that, but we do again have an oil pit play coming out from Ask. Mainly just trying to toss a Nitro on the initial entry from Faze into Garage, but not going to see much come from that. Just more posturing than anything. And the players will eventually fall back. So a full basement hold in the cards this time. Liquid will adjust their strategy from the previous attempt and rely entirely on this bottom floor hold instead of trying to utilize an extended room that we saw back on the last attempt that did not go too well and unfortunately didn't really waste a whole lot of time either. No, definitely not. Or some soft destruction inside of Kitchen as well as... Oh, well, speaking of soft destruction, Cameraman will step on a landmine and he loses his legs and he'll lose his life as well. It's a 2v5, or rather 2-5 scoreline for Cameraman. It's a 5v4 going into this now. Big news is, is that obviously the EMPs are off the board, folks. Not having Thatcher is going to make things even more difficult as they do not have access to Maverick. Anything that they have been able to grasp a hold of will more than likely be closed. But the good news is, is that they banned Kaid. That's the biggest piece to this puzzle. With him on the board, that would have been a very, very terrifying round, as all of these hatches would have more than likely been sealed. As continuing to do a fantastic job when it comes to the first kill department. He's three for five on them right now, and in just the last two rounds in a row, he's been able to specifically target out Cameraman as he's become the victim in both of those rounds. So things looking good for Team Liquid to start themselves off on the right foot, but as we saw in the OXG matchup, they've been able to come back from those time and time again and just having a little bit of a struggle with it here, especially in their post plants, as we touched on at the beginning of the round. By the way, though, FaZe now on a mission to make their descent into the basement with the last minute of play they have. They've used plenty of this time to gather intel to see what exactly Team Liquid's setup looks like, and now they need to take action upon it here as they're quickly running out of time to work themselves in. Well, now with only 40 seconds remaining and minimal time in order to achieve the deed, two will drop into Moto. They're trying to pressure Palu, but is that the greatest idea? He'll be able to trade himself out one for one initially as Cyber drops in. Astro taking some heat as Asko will be able to take him down. Cyber will flash out, but he has to double back to try and get control of the case. He'll take down Ask, but Nask refrags. It's down to the one versus three for Bullet. He's on the back end, but he'll only be able to secure one before resets picks him off the Mira, and that's just how good this setup can possibly be when she is in play. Yet another round here coming for the Liquid members. Faze seemingly relying on some of that pressure from Blue in order to make their Moto drop a bit more successful, but we just never see it happen here. Their players trying to work their way in and once again working from the back foot this entire time, but you can see this is just a very one-dimensional push. As you said there, it's not really the best decision because they don't have any counter angles set up to assist in that one. They're just walking directly into the Team Liquid setup, and while there was players in Blue ready to push, they too couldn't push because of the side angles that were working against them from inside of Arsenal. So a rough go of it there for FaZe, just throwing bodies at the site, hoping one of them would stick. And well, yeah, there was trades every once in a while with Liquid already having the 5v4 advantage from that nice Nitro cell from Ask at the beginning of the round. Not much of a hope for that to realistically work for FaZe. And they drop yet another round, and Liquid continue to surge here, leading 4-1 to one on this first half. An insane start to Clubhouse here for Liquid, as this is indeed FaZe's map pick. But just because it's your map, doesn't mean that you automatically claim victory as Liquid is proving currently on this defensive side. Also, guys, make sure you check out our eSports skins available right now inside of the Rainbow Six Siege client. Just head on over to the store, click the eSports tab, and you have access to all of the eSports skins. They directly support your favorite eSports teams like Liquid and like FaZe. All right, now we'll take, pay closer attention to the FaZe Assault once again here. They have a lot more work cut out for them. Starting to struggle inside of the early and mid round on top of that late round two, not even getting close to the execute this time. And unfortunately, only one additional round to go on this assaulting side to try and make up the difference here and at least give them a palatable 4-2 half, which again, is certainly going to be winnable here given the past history of Clubhouse and the general defensive sided nature of it. Seems like we're playing into that fairly heavily at the moment inside of this matchup. As neither team, FaZe at least, on their attacking side, not trying to play too heavily into that grenade meta that's been propelling our attackers forward and giving them a lot of extra boosts inside of these matchups here. Quickly though, they will open up the primary balcony, giving them the first point of access to the site that they'll need, which they did not really use all that much in the previous attempt here. They tried to go mainly for a construction swing, and it was fended off there by Liquid. 
Well, the checklist still has to be achieved in a certain sense, so still gain access to that wall as we seldom see it not destroyed inside of a round. It usually is the priority of every offensive squad when it comes to Clubhouse and their attack onto CCTV. It just applies so much pressure and makes things quite difficult at the end of the day. Astro with the AK-12 yet again here, sitting inside of Lounge and bearing down on Nesk or reposition in through Oil Pit. Might just go through and challenge inside of this space, but will Astro hear him doubling back? He sees the gun, and this might be the easiest Easy. frag Nesk has ever gotten in his life. Astro, we might want to change out those in-ears, my boy, as he did not hear this man stomping across the entirety of Garage to come and secure that frag. Looking for another one, and Nesk will get it as soon as he asks. Bullet will fall, and Liquid have a perfect half for opening bloods. Yep, every single opening kill going their way, and in this case, three of them, in fact, as they're shredding this attack apart before it even enters the building. Finally, some Someone trades it out, but he might be one of the only ones we get here as Cameraman is able to isolate out resets on the Malusi and eliminate that Palu, though, immediately exchanging not just one, but both of the remaining members of Team Liquid gives them another incredibly one-sided round. Things never really improved for FaZe over the course of that half. It only got worse, and now we've got a 5-1 lead set up for what was the defensive side. Now moving to the attack. Have Liquid leveled up? That's the real question here. This team is looking like they are on one at the current moment, especially for Ask, the IGL of Liquid, getting his hands really dirty, I would say. Disgusting openings from him as he's actually out Fragnesk, I do believe, on opening kills inside of that one. I believe he secured four, but definitely three, so he either tied him or ended up pulling past him just on that half, and that is just absolutely absurd. They'll be starting their offensive side five to one in their favor as FaZe tried to clamber out of this very deep hole here on their defensive half. Things obviously look bleak at this point for FaZe in this map, and it is their map pick. So once again, lends credence to a possible 2-0 for Liquid, but it's important to note the similarity of the map pool for both of these teams. So it's not gonna be an awful second map here for FaZe as they get ready to potentially move over towards Oregon. For the second play between these two teams, FaZe might have an opportunity to bounce back. Yep, we'll have to hold our breath on that until we finish up with Clubhouse here. However, if Liquid just runs the gauntlet all the way up to seven, it's certainly going to be tough to come up with a theory as to how that comeback might happen on map number two. Yeah, I feel like we've barely just gotten warmed up and these guys have almost completed the first map. This is insane, the speed run that we're seeing from both of these teams. In fact, as FaZe have been very aggressive on their offensive side, trying to secure these kills onto Liquid, but it was just Liquid time and time again punishing them for that aggression or just finding their opening kills in a myriad of different ways. But now, obviously, with Liquid being on the offense, we'll see how they want to set pace on their clear as Paulu. We'll start us off with the Cybertruck Hollow, one that you don't see every single day here. Be busting down the door and droning things out on the west side. Look with a slow roll, of course. They don't want to be tripped up by any early aggressions from FaZe either, and we're not going to get a whole lot of that. FaZe have to give over a massive amount of respect to Liquid, just with how much they're controlling this early fragging department. While, yes, that was from the other point of view, that was from the defensive side of this game, I think that's going to translate pretty well to the second half performance as well. Their players are on point right now when it comes to catching these early movements. There's not a whole lot that FaZe can do, especially on a basement play, to stop that from being true. So they have to rely on their actual insight setup in order to yield them a bit more success here and hopefully catch a member or two of Team Liquid getting a bit too aggressive, waltzing in, hopefully, one of the setups for the members of FaZe. You're really looking to FaZe to try and get an opening blood here and slow down Liquid as they have time and time again been able to pick off FaZe members and dictate how this map is going to be played. Hopefully the shoe's on the other foot now, but it's hard to say at the current moment as we're only a minute and 26 seconds remaining and nobody really dealing any damage just yet. It's just been map control going into the likes of Liquid as they clear things out with the drones and make sure no phase members are trying to go for a late flank just yet. As we know, FaZe are not afraid to do so as we saw them do time and time again uh, against Oxygen earlier on today. 
Paulo will continue breaking up the kitchen floor as he awaits Ass to drop in the Selmas onto the hatch. They need to open this up so they can get angles not only into the site, but possibility of a drop here as well. Impact out, and will it get it? Doesn't get it initially, as it will be busted up a singular time. Another impact out, and it actually won't get the Selma two out, and FaZe missed the mark twice. Good news is... It's caused at least a considerable amount of delay for Liquid, so only getting it open at around the 42nd mark leaves them with a very small time bank to actually make the transition downstairs and get into the site. And Liquid don't seem too confident in this drop either. You can see them holding back. Polly's still trying to open up avenues of opportunity here. Nade's going to be banking into Church, but that's read pretty quickly by FaZe. However, it does force some respect and allow Ass to get himself in. Polly's second Nade also manages to catch Souls, and now Nesk maintains position. Bullet responds and drops the plant. That's the big game changer they needed to possibly close out this round. Bullet's just gonna keep on going as well. He's up to three for this one and Cyber along with Astro will clean it up as that's a definitive stance put down from FaZe at the start of the second half. We might not be done with Clubhouse just yet. Well, at least for Bullet's sake, I can tell you that as he secures all of the frags necessary to pick up FaZe's second round. All from AK. Incredible stuff as Nesk has the Overwatch, but not for this position right here. Bullet able to get away with murder on that one and find the plant all the way at the back of Armory. The only issue right now is, well, that's going to wipe out Church and Armory from their site rotation. It's already done. They've gotten the round, and now they have to go somewhere else. This time around, it will be CCTV. Obviously, the mirror won't be in play here as Cyber will change that out. Mira, not exactly the greatest when it comes to this site as you're really condensed when it comes to CCTV and cash. So, much rather use the mute here to try and assist not only with jamming these walls, but preventing some intel from coming into the site. So, let's see here for the members of Team Liquid if they're going to be up to the challenge of an upstairs assault. Is unfortunately, not truly ready and not able to read into the potential aggressive swings for members like Bullet from FaZe that would have transpired downstairs inside of Armory. Good entry capability. I love the bait play with the nade to get the players in church to back off for a second. It opened up room for the hatch drop. But aside from that, FaZe quickly rebounding and Bullet specifically jumping himself back into the action there with Liquid, for the most part, not able to do much about that as he shuts down not one, not two, but three different members of the assaulting squad there. Finally putting a second round on the board for this team. That's the problem, though. Only the second round now picked up from FaZe on the very outset of the second half. They still have three more rounds just to tie us back up. Liquid, however, only need two to shut down the map entirely, so FaZe certainly still on thin ice as they try to tread deeper into their defensive half. And just an update for those curious that don't have the beauty of having two monitors at home. We do have an update from the Bravo stream. So if you're not into that kind of a thing, make sure you mute now. All right, we've given you, given you some time. It is currently 2-2 over on the Bravo stream as things are at a dead heat as they try to figure things out themselves. But as you guys know, it's a 5-2 uh, scoreline, at least for us, coming into round eight. So we're a little ahead of Bravo at the current moment. Nask will repel himself up to plat here as they've already gotten CCTV wall open. Nades out now towards rafters to see if they can pick up souls, but he's got ADSs here. So you're gonna have to try a little bit harder than that. Yeah, trying to bleed out a little bit of utility if anyone's going to be present just on the other side of that window. I think they will knock out one piece of device here. At the same time, they're gonna spot out. The ADS is currently supporting Souls' position. They'll know he's in the default spot. And again, they could have handled this plenty of times in the past. They'll know how to approach it, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that it will possibly fend it off here. So, going to have to play this carefully, but not too carefully. As we saw on the previous round, Liquid taking arguably just a little bit too much time to set up for their aggressive play and did not leave enough to clear out the interior of the basement site, ultimately allowing for lots of freedom for players like Bullet. And that was the opening, kind of the beginning of the end that allowed those players back in, allowed them to frag out as well. This time, though, Souls is going to be isolated out, bites off way more than he can chew inside of that fight. Virtually a 1v3 thrown at him, and he can't reconnect any of the damage onto any of the members of Liquid either. Yeah, a virtual firing squad awaiting him as soon as he stood up there from R1, unfortunately enough for him. So he'll lose his life, and now Liquid have enough space to try and get something done inside of CCTV, but Ask has now lost his life life as well. It's a four versus four as Liquid's looking to try and put a plant down. But is there any prevent here from FaZe? Well, they do have a couple of options, especially in the likes of Cyber and Bullet, who both have nades and cameraman still having to smoke as well. And that's why Liquid 
have sent Palu more than likely on this flank. He'll be discovered, though, from Astro playing inside of construction as PSK goes down. Nesk, he's going to continue to challenge forward. Cyber dead as he finds a couple cross. other ones. Palu will get one as they crunch things, and oh my, Liquid, they just barrel over the top of FaZe. They can't keep him out of the sight, and they'll walk through there like they own the place. Once again, the strategy is perfect from Team Liquid there. The player inside of Cash was supposed to fend off that flank, working itself into the Red Stairs rotation point, but that player himself got pressured from the inside of CCTV, so he had to fall back into a safe corner, could no longer fend off the swing from Nesk, and that left Nesk open for the killing here against the players in construction. And even in construction, there was a whole other member of Liquid that was pinching from the other side over by Master. Fortunately for FaZe there, good start to the round, good delay, as it was getting a little dodgy towards the end of it, but ultimately, Liquid had all the intel needed to crunch out that setup and shut down the play. And that is exactly what we've been talking about time and time again here at SI, John. Your ability on offense to be able to pull people to different sides of the site and force them to fight without their teammates is a very big deal. That's how Nesk gets so far into sight. There's just nobody at the top of red because they're having to deal with what's going on in construction. There's way too many problems for them to solve, and Liquid are able to just spearhead their way into sight and just run over phase. A fantastic round from them there as they have made it to the inevitable point here for one of these teams. Six points as they're looking for their seventh to close this out at 7-2. Divide and Conquer is the path to victory upstairs, but will it be the same downstairs now for Liquid as we move into possibly our final round of the first map? We have four opportunities to close it down here before overtime is triggered as well. And so far, only one successful translation from FaZe on this defensive end. Things do not look great, but now they go towards a bar site where they're given a lot more freedom to play out, a lot more real estate to work with here, and hopefully greater capability to fend off Liquid. But as we already saw, Liquid, if they're given the time to build up intel, find out where the setup is going to be positioned towards, and FaZe don't have too many tricks up their sleeve, Liquid can contain it. They can pinch it out and shut down this setup to negotiate that seventh round and end our first map in relatively quick terms. Not a single negative player at the moment for Team Liquid as they come out the gates here. 40 seconds already off the clock as they're taking their sweet time to make sure that they can do whatever is necessary to apply pressure to FaZe. Cyber, you might want to get off that camera there, bud, as this ex Kairos is about to go off, but fortunately enough for him, PSK isn't going to push it. It will be blown and Cyber will be very aware of that as the explosion is directly to his rear. Paulu will be breaking up the castle barricade as well to try and get some insight as to what's going on inside of construction. Astro will set things up here for a hop out for the master balcony. Paulu, Paulu. some awareness of it. He's going to try to stop the play from outside the window, but won't find much from that early on here. Our member of FaZe not feeling the need to leap out just as of yet. Cyber as well getting close by to the construction window. There definitely seems to be a want to pinch this player, but it's going to be a matter of timing as Nesk catches the cross from Bullet as he tries to make a play and goes down instead here. Once again, the opening kill goes to Liquid. Yes, indeed. And Nesk now with a drone down low as well. He'll be able to find some extra information as to what's going on inside of the bar space and with the initial pick already. They really just need to lean into this info game. The case is on Ask, so make sure you guys are paying attention to his score at the left-hand side. As soon as that goes yellow, that means all hands on deck for Liquid as they try and put a plant down. Extra insight coming through now for Liquid as they'll begin working on the actual site. I believe that stage wall being blown here is Cyber will more than likely be droned out inside of Kitchen. PSK checking Meat Locker, but does he check to his left? He sees all the holes upstairs, and now he sees a Maestro inside of the Kitchen space as well. He'll get that drone back out, but that's some very solid intel going into what could be the strategy in the dying moments here for Liquid. The dying moments, that's what Liquid is going to use to try and get themselves into the site yet again. I was worried about this on the previous two rounds, but not so much anymore. It seems Liquid have their wits about them in a lot of circumstances. The Flash blinding outside Cyber basically handing the duel over to PSK. And with Ask fighting another entry, FaZe are down to only two members remaining here. Cameraman and Astro, never mind, just Cameraman are all that can clutch this out in what would need to be a 1v5. There's one, but that's it. As Palu closes out on a flawless round from Liquid, a nearly flawless map. It is flawless in terms of their entry capability as they get the first kill on every single round, even the two that they lost, and absolutely decimate the early, mid, and late game here against FaZe to take the opening map of the series, 7-2. to two.
Before this game, Grixer ended up pulling ahead of Nesk by, I believe, six kills That's for done. his KD <laughs> difference. And wouldn't you know it, Nesk immediately bounces back to the top of the scoreboard. 11 and 5, folks, there on Clubhouse. And FaZe gobsmacked after that 7 2 loss to Liquid. See the chats going on over there just before we switch back to us. They are not happy about the results from that match. But why would you be? You can never get on the board with that opening kill. Can barely retaliate to it in most circumstances. And in quite a few of those rounds in the second half, just bowing down, letting Liquid walk in, even with their sight set up fully uninterrupted. Still, Liquid are tearing it to shreds with barely any trades over the course of the round. That last one, once again, flawless for Team Liquid. Just like the first half, things didn't get better. They got progressively worse worse for FaZe as the map went on. And that is bad news for them, as that wasn't, or excuse me, as we're going to get ready to go onto their opponent's map pick for our upcoming map on Oregon. Yes, it's going to be a very scary sight here, but something has to give. Or will Liquid continue to roll over FaZe? We really don't know, but there's only one way to find out, folks. Don't touch that browser. We'll be right back.
Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. Time to hop into map number two here in our interregional Latin matchup. Give me this intergroup matchup too. This is a rematch from Group B here. Team Liquid up against FaZe Clan. It looked like it might be a quick one as well, with Liquid absolutely running over FaZe's attempt to stop them back on Clubhouse. We get ready to move into Liquid's own map pick now over on Oregon for map number two. Yeah, it looks to be pretty scary as well as Oregon tends to lean just like CCTV and is everything else on Clubhouse. Pretty defensive-sided, so we'll have to see what FaZe can possibly do on this map, but here is the onslaught that we just witnessed from Team Liquid onto FaZe. It was a pretty incredible matchup, especially for Ask and Nesk. Is, I mean, just look at the opening stats yep. here, guys, that a single opening kill going the way of FaZe Clan. It's not even on, like, one player just dominating the entry as well. It's every single person, except for PSK, obviously, getting at least one of those kills over the course of this matchup here and not a single member of FaZe able to respond to it. How do you respond to that type of a loss now when you can't even get the round started nine times in a row here? FaZe Clan have to give over so much respect to Team Liquid but at the same time have to find ways to get into the site on their attacks, have to find ways to slow down the pacing on their defense, but they just can't do it right now. Liquid is controlling every aspect of it, minimum the early round, and in a lot of cases how these rounds play out as we get deeper and deeper deeper into them as well. This is a huge problem for FaZe, and I don't know if they're going to be able to solve it. This could be a very quick end to their upper bracket run. Yeah, especially if you're a stat junkie and you believe in cost, especially. 67% was the highest for FaZe. That means that you're not even being useful in three-fourths of your rounds. That's really, really tough when it comes to FaZe in the moment, and the problem is, is that, well, that was Liquid's lowest percentage across the board. They really have nothing to do inside of these rounds at the moment it's very hard fought for them but liquid time and time again are picking them to pieces and the biggest problems right now are nesk and ask the igl for liquid again getting his hands dirty inside of these rounds and always finding these huge frags that have some very serious influence but luckily enough for us folks we don't have to wait too too long for our second map oregon's right here and it's right now between liquid and face all right let's get into it ladies and gentlemen can we see a miraculous rebound from phase can they awaken themselves and fight against this absolutely lethal liquid roster that suddenly come alive themselves here in the playoff stage or will liquid just continue to run over the competition here. They've faced off against time after time again inside of Latin America. FaZe should know how to play against this team, but they seemingly haven't got a horse in this race at this point. Bands are in, at least the first one, of course, and Hibana knocked out. No huge surprises there. Same for our second one, as Thatcher is going to follow suit. Interestingly enough, we did have him on that last map as they opted to ban Maverick instead and try and throw a curveball in there that really didn't work out. Habana and Thatcher with Kaid being removed from Liquid as well, making a lot of sense with that Thatcher ban coming through. So we'll see if FaZe want to get rid of something. More than likely going to be Mira or Valkyrie, I would assume, but we've seen some pretty unique bans here at LAN. So don't just trust me outright. Let's see exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be Warden, and this is what I was talking about. We could see something being thrown in the works here from FaZe. They'll be starting off with this, but you know what this means, John. What, a lot of Ying? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. It has to be the Ying play. No one really banning Warden to go smoke plant nowadays. <laughs> it's all about those candelas and the amount of flashes that those things send into a room that makes it nigh impossible to see a single damn thing. We'll see if Liquid are going to abuse that and work that into their strategy or exactly what will happen. We're through the initial phase here as the six-pick phase will come through. PSK will adopt something. And yes, indeed. Here comes the Ying. At the same time, we're also going to see Mute Mozzie combo come in. So FaZe trying to deny as much intel as possible. That's a good adjustment when you consider how much Liquid was relying on intel built up in the early round in order to make their attacks so successful. Plenty of time for Liquid was sitting in a kind of scary situation with only like 30 seconds left and virtually no control near the site. Basically just set up outside of it, ready to start their execute. But oftentimes teams are not really able to make that workable. However, Liquid, because of their 
other great intel game was oftentimes able to do so because they had this surgical method for inserting themselves into the site and isolating out the members of FaZe in their setups one by one by one. By hopefully having these not only these pests, but the mute jammers blocking off access points to the sites, it's going to make it a little more difficult to acquire that intel that can allow Liquid to set up for those types of executes. Yes, indeed, my friend. We'll see if that's going to help or hinder our friends here inside of the game as of right now. Liquid with a pretty cheeky drone there. If you guys caught it, there's one inside of dorms upstairs inside of one of the bunks, so they'll have some early insight as to what's going on inside of that space. As Liquid are out of the gates and onto the map. They're ready for war when it comes to Oregon as Palu will botch a drone here as he tries to throw it ahead of him. But luckily enough, that isn't just going to like break it or anything like that. He can just continue to move that into the site. Only 20 seconds off the board here as Liquid will begin gathering information across the entirety of the map to see what FaZe are doing with this extended hold. So slow built again. Should be no surprise to anybody who watched the first map here. Liquid certainly taking their time about things. I'm curious to see how this uh, tower hold is going to work out for Astro. He's even got a mirror window committed to this one to fend off any potential early clears that would come in through Master and allow him to fire back in from the attic side. But at the moment, not looking like it's going to align too well with Liquid's own early intentions as they're pushing into tower, and that's more than likely going to pressure Astro out of this spot pretty, qu pretty darn quickly. Well, the big scare right now is how does this end up breaking down around this space. Fortunately for Astro, he'll remember to get rid of the black mirror, so he'll be able to work the angle the opposite way this time and not put himself into trouble. It's going to be resets inside of this space, but are they going to drone out the actual attic? Seemingly no information needed at the time, but Bullet with the very first opening blood for FaZe inside of this matchup as he'll take down Nesk all the way outside by Big Tower. Liquid have not been able to get too much done besides clearing out that Big Tower space as they'll continue to look for where they could possibly plant and these FaZe members, but most of them already working their way back to site except for the one player upstairs. Big Tower can, in theory, be enough of an execute potential if you're going to just try to waltz your way in through the back of the stage door, but you need to make sure you have pressure to counteract that hallway flank for the players that inside of Kitchen will almost certainly try to swing out against you. And again, Liquid do have that with still four players standing here. It's a pretty simplistic take, but it can work quite often here. Once again, going to use utility to start harassing the players further back towards the Kitchen position, and of course, the smoke off to allow the first plan attempt to go in. Candela's also, the responses from FaZe still yet to be seen as another nice nade land nearly takes out Bullet, and the plant, perfect from Liquid. It goes down on the ground, and now they just have to set up and wait for the retake attempt from FaZe here that Ask is already going to start putting down with the first pick against Souls. PSK's got a drone inside of meeting as well to make sure that Liquid don't simply have to face check this. A fantastic spot from Palu as well, as he'll hold one upstairs and just continue to play the window. Can he win out the second? Oh, he can. Dastardly in the moment. Nitro sell out. He won't be able to get any damage onto the Liquid member for Astro as he's done. Diced up as well. Cyber done. Resets gets it, and Liquid get the round. Three out of five of those final engagements there. You see members of FaZe trying to take duels. They look away at just the wrong moment, and inside of that moment, a member of Liquid comes swinging out right when they can't see him and knocks him out of the play. Beautiful stuff once again. Surgical execution from Liquid. Great usage of their utility. The smoke and candela combo is perfect to fend off all that kitchen aggro. FaZe can do nothing virtually about the planet temp without taking a huge risk on their own lives, and let's hark back to map number one here. Every time they try to make a risk like that, it would lead to a player dying, so they're not going to try and do it here. They let Liquid get the plant. They let them set up in a near po perfect post-plant scenario, and FaZe just bow down to it as they try futilely to force themselves back in. I mean, you especially got to give it up to Palu there in the way that he played that attic position, not playing it inside of tower, playing out on the balcony for attic instead. No one's going to check that. That window gets opened every single time that this round is played, I'm telling you. So it's such a commonplace thing that they're not even aware that someone could possibly be in that space and it even catches FaZe off guard. We're talking about professional players here, folks. Incredible stuff from Liquid on that one is we're going to need to see a successful defense at some point from FaZe and they might be second guessing this Warden ban after a handful of these rounds if they continue to go this way. 
We'll talk more about that in a little bit here, but it's going to be another basement assault, or rather the first basement assault for Team Liquid here. As FaZe went for a bit of a curveball on their first site choice over towards meeting, which quite obviously you guys did not pan out there. This one's a bit more traditional. This one's a little bit easier for the defense to control here, but even then, FaZe, I saw a couple players kind of roaming around upstairs towards the first and second floor position, and it's looking like we still have that. However, as we have seen from Liquid, paying no mind to those extensions in at least a few of these rounds here, so might just try to brute force their way past it as we have three players already built up towards construction doors. Well, PSK will get in, uh, we'll be getting some early insight yeah, inside of this space. In. Palu, nobody playing inside of the lower area here around the stairwell. Souls, luckily enough, will try and challenge, but he's been droned out now as well, afraid that somebody could come in above him as they're getting rid of the Banshee and they can continue to pressure. Souls will hop over into Harry Potter now as cameraman climbs down the stairwell, trying to assist his teammates. Some damage dealt, but Cyber will be the first one with a frag as he'll take out resets. Palu with the refrag, but Cyber yet again here as Ask doubles back. But does he get the other frag cyber out of bullets as Ask continues to try and challenge? We'll see cameraman come down the back stairwell as well to try and assist as PSK will slip through the cracks. He's in the back end, but there's no rotate inside of this space. Ask is all alone. PSK now with some space, but do they know that he's here? They don't. He's going to be able to pick up one, and he almost gets the second. Down to cyber now, up against Ask. Very low HP as PSK crawls away, but he doesn't have any other avenues to be able to abuse. He has to go straight for this. Stuns out. He stuns himself as well. That could have been the challenge necessary. As Cyber doubles back over. Ask will as well. And he's found him. What a clutch from Ask as he continues to show FaZe up in this matchup. FaZe are playing checkers. Team Liquid are playing three-dimensional, four-dimensional chess. Yes. Sorry, I got the meme wrong for a second. But either way, Liquid are shutting down FaZe and are continuing to dominate here. A massive streak coming in for them, even accounting for the previous map at this point. It is all Team Liquid sided here as they tear through the defensive side. Once again, even with an early fight advantage going by the way of FaZe there, I thought they were going to get crunched. I thought the ignorance of the upstairs hold was going to come back to bite Team Liquid. But again, Ask makes it work in an incredible clutch scenario. Out positions his opponent there. Uses the flashes to mask rotates and is able to get into a winning scenario there despite only having like 5 HP as well. Beautifully done by Team Liquid and even better for mask. Who needs an LMG? Who needs an ARX? Who needs anything? I'll take a Thermite any day, fragging out of his mind. Insane stuff happening from Ask right now is they've asked quite a bit of this member of Liquid here at SI. This guy is 19 years old, and this is what he's doing on an international stage in front of all of you at home. This is incredible stuff that we are witnessing here in the moment. FaZe have got to do something up against this madman. We'll see if they can do it here in round three, as once again, they'll move away from the last site that they played, and they'll go upstairs to kids' dorms. They just praying at this point that one of these sites is going to end up working out for them as they desperately transition from site to site to site, hoping to find better pastures, greener pastures, to pick up one round for themselves here. But at the moment, it's been two very, very dominant ones from Team Liquid. While the last one was closed, keep in mind, Liquid pled ignorance to FaZe's extended setup, so they knew what they were doing there. They knew it was going to be close because of that one, and still ended up out on top there, despite the disadvantage taken in the early fights. See Cyber trying to pre-pop the small tower windows to leap out, and he is going to go for it for a second here, but quickly jumps back inside. Maybe something later to be built up upon that. However, it could have been possibly relying on a bit of a gambit of someone else from Liquid being out and about towards that window, so not going to find them early on here. Ask chucking in the nade from below, not going to find anything with that, unfortunately. We will see the walk-in deal. Excuse me, that was to deal with a mute jammer, I think, that was sitting behind the wall there, as I didn't exactly line up the position mentally too quickly. But either way, deals with it successfully. Now Liquid will have that first exo blowing up the walk-in wall. Yeah, people have gotten so good with frag grenades that they don't even need Zofia or Buck to do that anymore. They will do it themselves, the soul. He's catching so much fire from Dorb's window. He's going to try and cross here as it feels like FaZe can do no right while well, Liquid does no wrong. Incredible stuff, at least for Liquid's start yet again here as they deal with some serious damage to him. Cyber will be able to hold on to Small Tower, though, and this could be the stick going in the
the tires very, very soon here for Liquid if they don't worry about this flank. But luckily for Palu, he is going to rotate off instead. Reset's starting to take some damage as well as Astro will be inside of this space in Attic. Bullet now trying to take a fight with Reset's all the way outside, but can he win it? Back and forth they go as they're both on equal HP practically, knowing that there is one upstairs. But oh my god, Ask is inside once again, and he's dealing damage to FaZe. Cameraman down as he backs up and out. Palu will push ahead as FaZe, they can't shut the door on him. Astro knows where one is, but Palu does as well, and they finally are able to take out one. Cyber doubles back, but he's down on low HP. Bullet has to do something about this. They're both so very low. Reset's down low. Oh he's down goodness. the top player, and again, we've asked for FaZe to do literally anything in this moment, but now it's up to Bullet inside of a one versus three. Finally catching resets there, but at the same time, Cyber gonna be finished off. Bullet waiting from down below here. He does have a Nitro in his pocket. Will he catch the play? It's out, but it's way off the mark here. So no dice on the Nitro. That was the saving grace for this team, but with Liquid giving the phase roster, the phase setup inside of dorms, absolutely zero respect. It wouldn't have mattered anyway here. There was still so much time left on the clock, and Bullet now sat in a desperate scenario here. He's just gonna try to stat pad, I think, and they'll use this extra 30 to 30, sec 30 35 seconds or so to be able to build up a little bit of intel, allow their IGL to give out some encouragement, hopefully some advice about how to play this one out. As this round is done and dusted, Liquid are looking at an easy third one. And they're gonna continue to build up a massive advantage. I have some advice. Run. That's that's my advice. This is just terrifying what Liquid are able to produce here inside of this best of three, not only on club, but also on Oregon. Ask with the pistol whip. He runs across kitchen right onto his table. Coats, the bullets come, but he's got that pistol whip ready as he'll take out the remaining phase member. Liquid up three. So, gonna be a pause here, which we pretty much can see that coming from a mile away with the uh, lack of an attempt to clutch out the 1v3. So, let's take a look at how exactly FaZe is gonna try to come back from this. What can they do as nearly every single aspect of this game is going wrong for them right now? It's just so impossible at the moment because FaZe are trying to play this close to the chest. They're trying to do what their strategy asks of them, but Liquid are finding these holes, especially Ask. No one expects the Thermite of all all people to be the entry onto the site, John. He's the first one in there. No one knows that he's going to be pushing in through the breach. No one's even watching the damn thing. He walks in, walks to the top of white, claims a kill, and then just leaves. He just walks back to the breach. And he's like, all right, guys, we got the first kill. Here's the next step. Palu in through window. Let's kill the guy in door. Oh, he's dead too. I mean, it is absolutely insane at the current moment. FaZe have a lot to talk about as of right now. Such an unorthodox style of play from Team Liquid. Normally you wouldn't dare to take risks like that, but with Liquid having the results from the first map in their backpack, they feel, if anything, even more confident to make those types of plays given how well it went for them inside of our first map back on Clubhouse. Ask, as you can see, leading the charge right now for his team at six and one, with the rest of his teammates not being too far behind as everybody else has a fairly respectable score line as well. Ness actually 0-2 at this point, but it doesn't even matter with the results that Liquid are putting out here. Absolutely the case, my friend. This is unprecedented, especially with what you and I witnessed the last time. I mean, John, we watched these two probably play some of the worst siege that I've seen these two teams play ever inside of this, you know, this land here. It was actually absurd. Like three days ago. Yeah, actually absurd the things that we were seeing. FaZe making huge mistakes, jumping out of windows and not defusing. People nading each other. People just simply not watching flank. And then this is what we get out of Liquid. They've leveled up. They're on a whole new caliber of play in comparison to FaZe, and they just simply can't compete in the moment. Only irons the point home that the group stage was truly a warm-up for some of our teams here. And now only inside of this playoff stage are they really going to start ripping and roaring, trying to fend off all opponents as quickly as possible in order to set up a big advantage for them here in the upper bracket. Liquid even coming into this one with a buy. So this is just their first matchup so far of this playoff stage here. FaZe having to contend against Oxygen earlier. Yeah, didn't seem to have too much of a problem dealing with them, but now struggling massively versus Team Liquid making very little progress and in fact, regressing in some aspects from the matchup in the groups a few days back. 
Well, resets will add to the drone pool here as they continue to try and find extra information to influence this mid game now. A cheeky spot here for the smoke as he'll be all the way upstairs of all things for a smoke player inside of dorms. Yes, indeed, folks, you are not being deceived. This is indeed a basement site defense. Cameraman here in a pretty cheeky spot. I believe he's got the SMG 11 shotgun in hand. So we'll have to see exactly what he can possibly muster from this position. Obviously, Liquid not really knowing that this will be going on as they haven't droned out the full map like they traditionally do. They're just trying to go for the site instead, and this could come back to bite them. This could be where we see the turn from phase, depending on how this goes for our smoke. So it's a bit of a slower process this time for Liquid here. They do have to proceed quite traditionally in order to get themselves access to the basement because of the more normal setup we're going to get from FaZe inside of this round here. Hopefully giving them enough player count inside of the site to be able to fend off this action from Liquid that they're eventually going to commit to. But at the same time, with Liquid not having much in the way, blocking their intel game specifically, you can see this. No Mute Jammers present this time for the defense. No Mozzie Pest going to be blocking off the drones either. They'll be completely free to just flood some of these pivotal areas with that intel and allow for them to build up a plan to assault this. However, limited options to actually get themselves into the basement between the hatches and what is that? Nesk walking up there, not accounting for cameraman's position, still extended out here. That's going to take him down as we got the rest of Liquid working their way in. Still going to have to watch out for the descent from Nesk, but at the same time, they've evened it back out. Souls now bringing his own heat to the table, though, as he finds resets, and things looking a lot better for FaZe all of a sudden, but you can't count Liquid out as usual here. Ask with another exchange, and cameraman coming back down the stairs. This is looking a lot more workable here for our defenders. Absolutely absurd that the smoke on Rome is what's going to put Liquid away here, but yes, indeed. Astro will take down Ask, and it's all left up to Palu. Six and two at the moment. If you can get it done, it'll be nine kills for him, but the move already done from Astro, but he's out of bullets. Oh, no! He's got the pistol, though, to secure it, and that'll be the very first round here for FaZe. A stronger stance here from FaZe, feigning the fact that it would just be a default hold on the inside of the site, and having those players hiding in the wings, most notably up towards Attic there, to fend off the pressure from Liquid. They line up their shots this time much more proficiently, and even better than that, avoid the large majority of the trades. They don't overcommit themselves to any of these fights here. And as you can see, in quite a few of these situations, members of Liquid either completely ignoring or just not being aware, specifically of cameraman's position, but a few others as well, sneaking them in a bit too haphazard from Liquid. And it's going to cost them their first round here. Still leading at 3-1, to one, but also locking down the first site from FaZe. They're going to make a return upstairs for this upcoming round and head to the double dorms. It'll be dorms again without a Jaeger as Cyber will pick up Valkyrie. We'll have my, well, my discs in order to be able to handle other things coming in onto this site setup. As for the remainder of FaZe's setup here, we will have Astro back onto the Malusi here. So more than likely have these Banshees placed around to try and get in in front of Liquid and make sure that they cannot be as dynamic in their push as they once were. We'll have to see if that works up against them as they've looked quite strong and I don't know if that last round will be enough to slow them down, but we'll just have to see. As for Liquid though, we'll have PSK with the Nomad coming into play and something that they will definitely be looking into more than likely for the remaining rounds as FaZe able to get away with way too much on that roam. Liquid priming themselves for spawn in just a second here, but FaZe not necessarily giving us any huge surprises in their own setup. Just your usual double kits dorms, or double dorms hold rather. We'll see. Just a few more is being reinforced as we get towards the end of that prep phase and into the action. As Liquid spawn themselves out here, a couple stragglers going to be left down below here. Cyber and Bullets will be putting a little bit of aggression out from the kitchen and Yellow Hall area to try and stop the initial clear from Liquid themselves. And hopefully get that opening kill yet again here to give them the respectable distance they need to trade out in a worst case scenario on the site in order to win here and make the scoreline a little bit closer to what would be a 3-2. Desk, of course, catching on to this. He's going to spot out some of the counteraction coming in here from Cyber. Won't bite into it just yet, but at the same time, he's not going to be alone. So there's a possibility we could see this player get pinched out, especially with Ask now lining up his own position over towards the White Stairs window. Cyber still wants the heat, but it's going to be Nesk instead that grabs Bullet closer towards Kitchen. 
Unfortunate for FaZe now as they've lost the opening blood here. It was two for two back and forth, but Liquid pull ahead with three. They know one's still here as Nesco get down, but Cyber gets dusted, and oh no, it's all for naught now. It's a five versus two, and Nesk wasn't confirmed. He'll be picked back up. He can use the Gemini to assist now to try and clear out most of this. FaZe only having their two members remaining. Luckily enough for one, it's Cameraman. As well, Souls will take the initial duel here against Ask outside on the master balcony. But does he know that the pressure's coming up the stairwell? He does. He'll take down Palu. Tries to add to it, but Ask is too good in this situation. This will shut him down. Cameraman knows that he more than likely has to start trying to pressure here. He's trying to look for his isolated one-on-one. -on -one. He finds a drone. He'll be able to get rid of that, and he'll smoke off this eventually once Dorm's pressure starts to come in. Or rather, Trophy. He'll move back to Dorm's now. Another smoke out here, but that was exactly what PSK wanted. Liquid claim round five and they'll get their fourth. So a bump in the road on their second assault towards the basement, but immediate correction coming in from Liquid as they're able to take top control yet again here. FaZe trying to take the fight to them, trying to out-aggro this very aggressive Team Liquid. And that goes pretty much as you guys would expect it, with Liquid controlling every single facet of that round yet again, only tripping up very slightly by losing one or two players over the course of it here. Four to one is the scoreline. Liquid looking at a possible repeat of the same scoreline, same halftime score this is from our opening map. If they can claim one final round here, as FaZe are going to make another return to the meeting hall hold for the first time since this game started. Now, with that being said, there's something that's very fortunate about this in comparison to the very first round, and it's that Liquid do not have Ying inside of their operator pool for this one. And that really was the biggest thing, the biggest tool that Liquid used in order to claim that round. If you guys remember, Bullet got the opening blood on that, and then FaZe had to try and retake with both ends of Split smoked off and connected. Uh, Candela's going off like crazy inside of the site. It made it nigh impossible to actually push back in and try and get any vision because, well, all you'd be seeing is white. And for Liquid, that made things extremely easy for them to not only get the plant down, but set up for a perfect post-plant situation, especially for Palu upstairs on the meeting, or rather attic, window. As of right now, Looks like we will be having some very similar setup here for FaZe as it will be controlling this top floor for the time being. So Liquid up 4-1 now over the FaZe roster. FaZe once again going to bring a fairly expected lineup to the table for the defensive start on this one. Only looking to mitigate the utility being chucked in. It's a good thing they bring that as well because the switch up for Liquid, as Stokes was mentioning there, away from Smokes and away from the Candelas and instead relying on three sets of frag grenades that have now been brought to the table. And you guys can see that utility at your top left. It's two frag grenades per player here. So just do the math real quickly and you'll see exactly how it's been lined up for our attackers. We're going to have to hope now that the ADSs on top of the Mumai Discs are going to be enough to mitigate the large majority of those, as certainly Liquid should be capable of bringing that surgical play, be able to get those nades in the right place. And with the flashes being brought as an insurance policy, Liquid themselves might even have a plan to deal with these extra forms of mitigation. We can see some of them being flashed in now. It's going to be a distraction for the noise cue. I'm placing down the EXO. I'm going to be able to get that off. Of course, it'll be disabled, I think, temporarily here, but still going to see it go off relatively quickly. In just a second here, as soon as that fades away. Oh, Cameraman with a big swing at the big window, though, gets the first kill of this round as he's going to find resets over by Dorms. Well, luckily enough for Liquid, they have switched things up as they'll be going for a kitchen attack instead. The biggest issue now is that they don't have any top control just yet. The smokes will continue to go off on white, preventing Nesk from taking a hold of this location. PSK trying to work his way up the main stairs here as well as Astro could have a possibility of a flank as the shotgun coming in, cameraman will dust Nesk on very low HP. But unfortunately for Nesk, no shots coming out of that ARS, or rather ARS. <laughs> ARX, dude, it's so dry in here. Your mouth, just, your mouth just doesn't want to work. Like the right Sahara now. Desert in here, my friend. But either way, Palu will be next up to the plate as well the flank will work out here for FaZe. And right. fortunately enough, so will the round. A flawless one for them they desperately needed on this defensive half as they make things a little bit easier on me going into the dying moment. Yeah, much more respectable outcome to that round two for FaZe Clan here and kind of, you know, an obvious point as they end up flawless on that one. Liquid, for the first time in this entire series, have their wits cut out from under them. They close line as they try to make any type of move in that final round, and that's going to be a huge confidence boost to FaZe, but at the same time, 
their time in the sun is now up on this defensive end of our very defender-sided map. And now they have to get ready to jump onto the attack where Liquid will probably reignite some more of that crazy capability that we have been seeing inside of the first half here. They still should have plenty of confidence to try and pull these types of moves against FaZe, even on a site like this, as they're going to go immediately into a basement play. And this is where things could change up for FaZe. They were able to get two rounds on their defensive side, and obviously with the Warden band coming in, the Candelas from Yang are going to meet in quite a bit, as we saw for Liquid's offenses as well. So this is prob uh, probably going to help out FaZe quite a bit. We'll have to see if they can get control of the space for meeting initially and try to get these Candelas down towards pillars and things along those lines, but that's for later on into the round. For now, Liquid are setting up the basement in the way that they so choose and we'll be bringing a mirror along for the ride as well. Paulo will be setting up these mirrors, one inside of a closet, more than likely one over on the freezer wall, just so they have extra insight as to what's going on in that space, and then we will get down to the nitty gritty. Well, phase spawned out. Let's take a look and see if they're gonna be able to catch any of these roamers from Liquid. Most well, notably Nesk at this point here, playing the small tower counter. Away from that, he might have one or two players supporting his position as well. It certainly seems to be the case. But FaZe have these preset drones ready to start scouting in that direction here and hopefully finding out the positions of the members from Team Liquid here. Maybe some time, though, before we see all that intel start to work its way out. And actually look like the large majority of players from Liquid that were going to be flying around upstairs have now had second thoughts about it. And instead, we go towards a more traditional sort of anchor setup here instead for our defensive roster. Yes, indeed. And for FaZe, they'll be looking to Astro now for the Rotero drones to start clearing up some of Liquid's utility, making things a little bit easier for them. Cameraman will begin torching the hatches as well as the Rotero drones go down the stairwell and look to see if it can get rid of anything like Banshees or anything of the sort. And that's exactly what it will do, is it will destroy the Banshee on the island, which could be a telltale sign of a laundry freezer take. But we'll just have to see. They definitely still have plenty of time to be able to shift this wherever they so please. But just looking for a kill in the current moment. He'll pre-fire as of right now, but nobody home inside of the space as Souls, with no smoke, secondary hard breach will get the hatches for phase. Can opener being used to open up that fairly quickly, and PSK whiffing a bit there, trying to get his shots on the Rotero drone. All good, as I believe it wastes the drone, knocking out no utility in the process anyway, unless there was a Banshee or something like that set on the stairs. Yep, so there was a Banshee. Thank you very much to our observer for confirming that for me real quick. I saw it in the corner of my eye, but wasn't sure if it managed to catch it, but indeed did. So in fact, the Rotero working out quite nicely, as they're going to try to pop out another one here as well, and also use the Soft Breach to open up another window into the eavesdrop. Oh, bullet now with some nades. Is there any ADSs inside of this space, though? We're about to find out more than likely. Ask now stuns coming in onto him inside of Elbow. He'll continue to smoke things out as Cyber will set an air jab down onto the ground here for the construction door. PSK, though, more than likely won't be rotating there anytime soon as FaZe have basically lobbed off this entire section of the map. Now, actually, PSK has made the cross because he killed Astro, but will the air jab be able to find him? That's that's the big question. He's worked it into the corner. Nitro sell out. PSK glaringly aware of the push, but it's actually Ask that grabs him instead. We'll have the Candelas come out as FaZe is falling to pieces. They'll jump in, look for the frags. They'll find one, but not for the, before the refrag comes in from Nesk. Ask to grab the last kill and Liquid to grab round seven. There's too few players getting into that site too late into it. We have to see them split up just to try and negotiate even a chance to get site control there. The trade setup's far too strong for Liquid, and things go just like you would expect them to, just like we were seeing back on our first map on Clubhouse, as Liquid immediately rebound, falling short just a bit there towards the end of the first half, but now in control once again at a 5-2 to two score line. Only two away now from controlling the entire series in very quick fashion. At 7-2 to two overall for this map here. The site is going to shift itself, not towards, at least for an EU and NA perspective, the expected second site here, as normally we'll see teams go upstairs instead. Shouldn't be surprising, though, considering the way we already saw FaZe play out their own defensive half. They're going to head onto our first floor hold towards meeting once again. Let's see if this will work out for them. Yes, indeed. Meeting a pretty unique site when it comes down to it, especially with the hatch blade that comes in through meeting, where you can see some nitro cells poured in from the basement. But that's not what we saw from FaZe. Might not see it from Liquid either, as Liquid was able to get that 
stage plant down and make things seem pretty easy in the process. Obviously, Liquid will be extending this hold upstairs to make sure that FaZe cannot run amok over their defensive setup. And this is actually going to be quite extensive as we have a deployable shield with some Yokai drones from Palu, as well as some Banshees around the space uh, from resets in order to make things a little bit easier, not only to slow down a phase, but also for the info game for these players that are in more of these strenuous positions. So with phase out on the field, what's going to be their plan to get control? What's going to be their plan to figure out the types of setups that Liquid have deployed? Soros. Once again, it's not too, it's not going to be too crazy for Liquid here as they won't throw out anything that is brand new for the actual positioning and the overall setup that they will bring to the table. But they still have to be very, very cautious about how they proceed, considering the very mixed results they have had on openers. Even just looking back at map number one, not a single opening kill going in their favor. They need these desperately to negotiate for some type of positioning against Liquid. We can see both Nesk and PSK taking the front spots here in the meeting room site. That will need to be cleared out or flushed out in some way before FaZe can even realistically think about taking it. And that's not even accounting for the upstairs hold in Attic also. Yes, indeed. As FaZe begin to work their way into the map, some air jabs downstairs to make sure no one can rotate up the big tower stairs to try and do anything to these FaZe members as they begin breaking up the site. Mute Jammer down, but luckily enough, the Rotero drone short, so it will still go off. So they'll blow open the stage wall. Liquid more than likely well aware of the situation at the current moment, at least now, especially if the stage wall has been blown. So we'll see how they would like to respond. Still have top control here as the stuns start to pour in. Rather, smokes from Souls as he's looking to go for the smoke plant soon. One of them will be grabbed by a Wamai disc, I do believe, as they try to nade in through the space to make sure no one's inside of sandbags. But it's only PSK that's home for the current moment. Trying to look for another frag in the moment if you can find another frag grenade out, but it's actually Bullet to hit his frags instead. It's a five versus four now as FaZe still try and make some space to try and put this plant down. Extra foot forward from Liquid here to try to play out into the open, comes back to bite them, but at the same time, Nesk downing out Souls and the Toxic Bay blocking the path forward, gets the confirmation. The exchange is found. Liquid are right back into it, and even worse, the case is now down on the ground too, but they continue to peek into these fights here. Members of FaZe respond, but so does Liquid, immediately seeing Palu pick up the exchange on the bullet, keeping us even in a 3v3 here. Cameraman lurking out onto the inside. He's got his chance for a plant now, but does he have enough support? Support to try and risk it here still as there's more members from Liquid waiting right around the corner in the connector. Here we go. They'll attempt to put it down onto the ground. Ness cannot spot it here and Cyber is going to be able to take out resets. More and more members of FaZe getting into secure Overwatch positions here and it's left everything on to Palu who also is going to get swiped off of this round by Cameraman. A response from FaZe is found and we are right back where we started here at a plus two round advantage for Liquid. Very well done from FaZe there. I love the way that they worked the map and were able to secure most of Tower, making it very difficult for Liquid to try and rotate into them. Some very big pickups on the kitchen end as well as Palu tried to fight back, but unfortunately unable to for Liquid's sake. As for FaZe, they're able to stave off match point, which they desperately needed to do in the moment, and now only two rounds away from tying us up here, but a seriously long road ahead of them, especially when it comes to the frag department. Department. Ask has been popping off as well as Palu, and they really need to get the show on the road. Yeah, if anyone else from Liquid wants to join the party here, it would pretty much seal the deal, as we would have so much firepower being brought to the table for this team. I'm just not really sure if FaZe would be able to contend with that. That was what we saw out of Liquid inside of map number one, but a few players, most notably Ness and Resets, struggling inside of map number two. Resets, of course, can be forgiven to some extent, but Nesk, not necessarily the case. This is a, a big player for Liquid and a big player globally, looking at statistics as well. We expect better from him, so we'll see if he'll maybe have a bit of a light map contribution as he's able to come alive a bit more. Michael will be headed up toward dorms for this one and ask with a pretty interesting pick for his primary weapon. He'll be bringing the Supernova. We don't get to see this one too, too often as I believe we're all pretty used to the MP5 SD, but if you think about it this way, it's pretty much a makeshift M590 SMG 11 setup. You have the secondary bearing nine, you have the Supernova primary shotgun for rotations and things like that, but even then you really wouldn't even need it that much given the impacts that Palu and Nesk have, but they might be 
we're using those for prevention or things along those lines. As for FaZe, they're now out and about on the map here, and they'll be clambering their way towards the top end here as they start to warm up this drone game and find some extra insight onto the Liquid Squad. Slow building here for both of our players. Nice catch from Nesk as well, just barely getting that Artero drone off this time and stopping the destruction of what would have been his, his entire setup inside of the attic position too. He's got to find another one though. This one going to make it through and yep, it'll get triggered. So goodbye to all oh. of that utility. <laughs> all three of the ADSs, kind of a big risk inside of this meta to put all three of them kind of scrambled together like that. But either way, the choice is made and the consequences are now dealt with for Liquid here. And Nesk has to fall back more than likely from his garage position. I was going to say, if you wanted to know if Flores was a good operator or not, there you go. That's that's basically all you needed to see. PSK going to take a lick of damage from that, but only a lick. Nothing more than that. Liquid will be able to at least stay alive for the time being. The Yokai drones finding some insight as to what's going on on Master, so they know this is starting to look more like a kid's dorm's offense than anything. As well, Palu will be able to continue holding on to Trophy for a time here. Cameraman still manning the kid's dorm space. He'll be able to get one in down low and start looking for armory just in case somebody does start to try and rotate over to this area. That Yokai will go inside of Z as well for some extra intel for Liquid later on over towards White. Nesk will now be stunned out as the discs are nowhere to be found, but Bullet will find him instead as he rotates back in towards dorms. Astro's been able to grab a hold of the attic space as he'll drop down into Swamp and begin pushing forward. Okay, Drone, charting off its first stun to attempt to hold back some of this play, but only even exchange is being found so far. Cameraman really shutting down the liquid play, and he's been a huge proponent for FaZe throughout most of this series. Palu nearly getting caught, resets, only able to negotiate one, and now he's the only one left here as FaZe bully the members of Liquid out of the site yet again. Case down now, and a 1v2. This is winnable for resets here. Would be an outright 1v3 if he can work it here. As he found out one player's position, he's going to have to consider again that they'll both be stacked together, and he won't find it out quickly enough as Astro negotiates the last kill. And suddenly, FaZe are back in this map. They're back in this series as they're only one round away from tying it up. Now the big news for Liquid right now is that they can head back towards a basement and that's exactly what they're going to do. Laundry Supply, the next site in the site rotation here as they were able to win that pretty handedly when FaZe went for their execute. And the other thing is, John, is that FaZe have completely went away from the Ying. It's going to be Nook instead. I just wanted to double check before we got too far into that. They've banned Warden out to make sure that they can utilize Ying, but the biggest thing is they're not really putting it to its maximum potential. The good news is, though, they're going to move away from Nook and they're going to pick up Capital. They more than likely were talking about that. And we're like, hey, they don't have access to Warden. We can really use Smokes here as well as those Firebolts. So we'll see how far they can possibly get with those. The big thing is, though, Nesk is on the direct counter in the likes of Wamai. So they're going to have to make sure to clear out these discs before they get too far ahead of themselves. It'll certainly be the priority and certainly won't be the impossible task for the members of FaZe as we will once again have Astro on the floor as bringing those explosive drones into the fold. Of course, have the possible capability of the Magnus just being positioned on the roof and I would say that that's a probably going to be the expected position for those to be placed into. So a little bit harder to take those out but as you were mentioning, the intel gain strong for both of these teams so more than likely, FaZe going to prioritize the elimination of those or at least dump in their own flash supply before they attempt to throw in either of those bolts. Well, FaZe will be reinserting themselves inside of this round as they'll be entering the building from the lobby space. PSK will be repositioning some of these ADSs as Seemingly nobody home over on the north side of the map, and he's extremely correct in this assumption. He's going to move them up into the freezer hallway to try and make this a little bit easier to play for his teammates. As of now, though, Astro and the remainder of the squad looking to clear out this mid-floor and start opening up some of these hatches. That'll be on to Cameraman, as well as, well, actually not Cyber, as he won't be 
applying that secondary hard breach and set a claymore here to make sure nobody can rotate into me. And a pretty cheeky one at that. Even though there's only one laser being poked out there, that's still a claymore that will kill you if you end up running into it. So, Rotero drone out now and more than likely a Banshee being removed from the table just like it was the last time and there it goes. No matter what you do with the BP there, it's still going to go off. So, fortunately for FaZe, they can now run amok inside of this space. And it's trying to stop it before it managed to trigger itself, but a little bit too slow on the trigger, so those drones will continue to flood in. Soft Breach used for it here, and does manage to take out a Magnet as well, so even a little bit of utility getting dealt with, too. Some great utility usage once more. Astro here as he continues to really harass the setups from Liquid and make mint speed of most of their utility. Making it much easier for FaZe to bully their way in time after time after time again. What was looking to become a very one-sided series before for Liquid is suddenly a much closer competition here. As again, FaZe sit at the brink, sit ready to challenge the members of Liquid. Do Liquid accept that though? Do they swing out themselves to potentially try to contend directly against it? This is how they've lost a lot of players in earlier rounds. They might want to sit back, wait for FaZe to make the first move here as they're stacked up to a worrying degree here. Four players trying to insert themselves through Freezer. One-to-one -one exchange has started off, but the lost one on FaZe has not been confirmed as of yet. Oh no, now two down on the ground as well here. As <laughs> going crazy with the M590s. He's up to a personal three on this this round, Cyber is alone, and he won't even get the clutch started as he's knocked out by PSK. And Liquid finally negotiating an offensive round for themselves. It's already going to put them on map and match point. Now, where are they going to go for this next site? That's the big question that we all have shaking around inside of our heads for the moment after they're able to secure their second basement defense downstairs. For Liquid, they're thinking that it's going to be kids' dorms. Now, this is where we saw FaZe uh, do a very bang up job job of clearing out most of the odds and ends when it came to the dorm space. They were able to get a dorm's window as well. A huge Rotero drone coming in through attic and clearing out that shield inside of swamp that had three ADSs on it and it ate up all of that with a single drone. So for Liquid, they'll more than likely rethink their strategy in this situation as those Rotero drones will still be on Astro. We'll more than likely won't see all of those ADSs dedicated inside of attic this time around. But hey, they could still stick to it and just try and get rid of those drones in the first place. We'll just have to see. PSK is going to set up one of his Goyo shields here inside of games as FaZe begin to try and get some extra intel here inside of the prep phase. They don't want to go too far, obviously, as to not lose drones early on, but they just want to make sure that Liquid will not be roaming around the main level. So with Liquid up on the cusp of a 2-0 victory for the second time this tournament versus FaZe, they have a reputation to provide for themselves. They have an upper bracket position to defend. They now need to close out these next two consecutively. And once more, that is only to trigger overtime. This is just like what we had back on Clubhouse. A little bit less desperate and a little bit more palatable for FaZe, but very similar circumstances with FaZe chasing down their earlier deficit and hoping they can negotiate it back here before Liquid it's that final point needed to shut down the round here. First Rotero drone, dead. That's a huge piece of utility getting found out by Liquid. But the good news is there's plenty more. Astro is still with three of those to bring in. We are going to see at least one of those successfully make its way forward to deal with some of the opening utility positioned over here by the front door. And a cheeky angle here from Souls as well, one that you can utilize at home if they end up giving it to you. Ask will actually end up going down inside of White as he doesn't really know that the bottom white window has been opened, so unfortunately for him, he's dead to right. He's just <laughs> simply going to sit here. No and, one's going to come here. Yeah, just hold his wound and then not hold his wound and just move his arms back and forth because that's really all you can do inside of that situation. Unfortunate for him is he is the top frag right now for Liquid, but a great boon for FaZe as it begins to clear up a lot of this utility. Now, Palu looking for a refrag in a certain sense to try and equalize here as we are already past our opening minute. Souls. Still hoping to find another member of Liquid leaning back out here. And once again, FaZe have been able to catch, even just in Ask's case. Plenty of members of Team Liquid just because they're caught roaming too late into the round or trying to make a transition that they really shouldn't be or trying to take a fight even. Might be a bit too bold. As we're seeing now, in some cases, four resets here as he nearly gets found out by a nade through the floor. We saw the red ping for just a second, and the second one is going to follow it through as it's a clean opener. Three kills in a row from FaZe here. Liquid bow down to the assault coming in here from their opponents, and now it's going to fall to Nesk and PSK to try and clutch out a 2v5, but this is probably already 
already could end up being too far gone too quickly unless we see a heroic comeback from these last two players. Need some serious kills to come through here for Liquid as they try and chase FaZe down, but already a positive boon here for them as Nesk will take down one PSK now as well. Instead of the white space, could possibly claim a life, but nobody on the window for the time being. But looking away for the swing here, and he'll find it. But PSK, what a shot from him. They've almost got the equalizer, John. It's a two versus three in the moment, but fortunately, Astro will shut down one, and he'll get the second one as well. FaZe not out of this fight just yet. FaZe taking a slow approach to that clear there inside of the 5v2, and while, yes, it does bleed out a few additional members of the assaulting team, it gives them the room they need to find an opener where they can insert themselves in between, drive a wedge almost, in between the last two players alive, and ultimately take control of that round without any further losses. I believe a tactical pause is going to be working its way in here now for the members of Team Liquid as they've suddenly lost their mojo a little bit here. They've lost their aggressive capability, especially on this defensive side, to just shut out FaZe entirely. FaZe is locked in to the issues present in Liquid's own setups and are now about to make a comeback happen with only one more round needed to trigger OT. The aggressive front right now from Liquid on their kids' dorms defense is simply not working out for them. They're time and time again giving up the bodies over to FaZe, and then FaZe is playing patiently in order to extract Liquid's aggression from them and get those kills from that. So it's been fantastic stuff from FaZe to be able to bounce back, especially when Liquid started up 3-0 to zero on this map, and they are one round from forcing this into overtime. But for Silence, a beautiful tack timeout here as he will have some moments to discuss with the squad and see what they can possibly do for this next defense. In all honesty, it looks like Liquid just kind of needs to cool things off a little bit here, play into a default hole. It's looking like Kids is going to be the upcoming site, so if they're able to avoid fights from FaZe up until the last minute or two of the round here, and even just win out that first fight or two, should be able to leverage that advantage without too much of a problem against the rest of FaZe as they try to assault the site. The bigger issue, though, is going to be fending off those Rotero drones and other forms of utility clear that's been making their insight setup so weak and has possibly been forcing out some of the peaks from Liquid as they might feel they need to do that to get themselves ahead now that they don't have ADSs, deployable shields that they would normally rely on as time-wasting devices. Absolutely, and especially like last round when Ask gets picked off like that, they're looking to try and kill someone to equalize there. And then once somebody else dies, it's like, okay, well, we need to be aggressive again to get a kill, and then it just snowballs into one big old problem. So fortunately enough for Liquid, they still have that tag timeout. It's still regulation, so they can still close this out at a 7-5 to five score line. Now, though, they will be going back upstairs, just like John had said. We'll see if they can try and reapply themselves to this in a uh, considerable fashion, unlike the last couple of times here, as we did have a six pick come in for Palu away from the Echo and onto the Aruni, so these laser gates could assist them in a certain sense. They've opened up some new uh, holes to be able to use here, especially at the back of Trophy that they could possibly utilize to lock things up. And just look at this defensive matrix inside of this space. Not only the window out here for top main, but there's a Banshee down on a reinforcement, a bulletproof for extra insight for Palu here. There's going to be Nesk inside of Attic to be able to make sure nobody pushes in from that direction. And he's going to have smokes here as well to be able to lay for the actual kid's closet and things along those lines. But the big problem is with all of that utility inside of that space, that means that Faze might possibly find the soft spot that would be over here inside of the actual dorms. Well, we got FaZe working their way in through Small Tower, going for the usual opening clear. Well, a few other players, most notably Astro, will start posturing up towards the big window. In Astro's case, mainly as a deployment point for those Rotero drones. Be able to start blowing up all the utility hidden deeper in the site. Away from that, Soul's also going to be paying close mind to any potential little tricks Liquid may be trying to pull with big tower positions, and there will be presence here, you can see it. Ask is going to take up a spot inside of T3, but they'll have to wait for the moment of opportunity to try and strike against the members of FaZe when they're trying to put pressure through a rappel on the kid's window, or possibly over towards the big window if they'd be leaning out in the right direction there. It's a risk if he stays quiet for too long as well, because as we've seen time and time again, members of FaZe are going to be leaning into the site eventually, and he doesn't want to rotate in too late, but thankfully it works out this time for him. Ask secures the opening kill. They don't account for a potential T3 hold, and Souls becomes the first victim 
As we see the kill picked up on the opener again for Mask. This is a massive issue. That's the Thermite, and now this is all left up to Cameraman to be able to get all of this open. There's no secondary hard breach on this team. It's going to be all torch work for them to get a hold of anything that they so choose. Bullet now trying to get some control over the white space, but luckily enough, a frag grenade will come in from underneath, and it'll land on deaf ears. No one taking any heat from that as Liquid have finally found their stride here on the dorm's defense, but that doesn't mean that FaZe can't fight back here in a certain sense. Bullet still on white as Paulu continues to hold things down in dorms, awaiting the arrival of these FaZe members. Pretty much all the nades wasted here for FaZe as well, or at best used to knock out utility. You can see at least two trying to take out a player in the position towards kids' dorms, but look at the help from Liquid. Zero damage done from that one, so FaZe failing in that regard here. And now not going to have anything to use to waltz into the site with, as we see Cyber with an excellent cross established for himself, only able to negotiate one kill, but there's the confirmation on the second, and Cameraman, no respect given to Liquid, is now there waltzing right into the site. Problem though, it's only an even conversion. Brought down to a 2v2. Ask trying to commit himself to the fight. It's a great distraction that allows resets to bang back out and take down Cyber, leaving Cameraman alone with only 10 seconds to correct. That's a good shot to start things off. He knows the last player is over towards White. Possibly gonna go for a rotate, but no, Cameraman playing into this gambit too heavily. Oh, nearly able to line up a headshot there at the end, but it won't pan out. Liquid shut down the series 2-0. After a bit of a bumpy second half, course correct very quickly in order to take control of things inside of regulation. It's 7-3, followed up by a 7-5, and it's 2-0 to Liquid as they keep their position in the upper bracket and kick phase into the lower. Truly insane series in between these two, but it's liquid dominance here today. And not only that, but a showcasing of what Ask is worth. What an insane series from him, really taking it to phase, not only on map one, but map two. Top fragging for liquid with 15 frags. Excellent play. And again, this is the IGL for the team also. So no excuses about it. Again, always the IGLs we can lag behind on the stats. That's all right. He's doing both. He is fragging out and he's handing out the calls there. It's impressive stuff from Liquid. And if their map one performance is going to be anything they can replicate in future matches, watch out everybody else in this tournament because Liquid are potentially coming to knock you down into the lower bracket. And if Liquid finally is bested at any point here, potentially going to knock you out of the tournament as well. Yeah, this is a team that is looking to lift a hammer this year, folks. They look absolutely incredible, especially in comparison to when the last time John and I casted them. This is a completely different liquid. I'm very excited to see how deep of a run they can make. Can they lift a hammer? We don't really know, but I'm very, very excited to find out. For FaZe, of course, their run is not over just yet either. They're still going to be kept in this tournament, but now they have to go down into the lower bracket where they sent Oxygen to start the day off at as well here. So possibility for those two teams to meet and for Oxygen now to claim revenge is certainly alive and well. And FaZe's other matchups outside of the ones they've played versus Liquid have looked fairly promising. So I'd keep good hopes alive for FaZe to maybe make a bit of a comeback run themselves and possibly go fairly far inside of that lower bracket. Of course, we'll have to wait and see what the rest of the competition is going to look like before we can make a good deter determination about that. But either way, I'd say there's good days ahead for FaZe still in this tournament as we still have four more, excuse me, five more days of play still to go here at SI 2022. Yes, indeed, my friend. And well, that's going to do it for you and me today. And that's going to do it for the stream right now, guys. We're going to send you to a little break and we'll be back with the Command Center.